Hello, my name is Rick Bruce. I am a steward for the open space here in Flagstaff. One of the places I frequently visit is Pitcher Canyon, which is a beautiful area. Uh, it's got a only waterfall we have here in Flagstaff, and it uh, changes throughout the year as far as the vegetation and what you just might see. Today, I'm gonna focus on the wildlife that I've seen at Pitcher Canyon living in the area. Some of it is just uh, passing through either in the spring or in the fall, migrating. Some of it you may see uh, occasionally in the summer months only, and other uh, wildlife is here all year round. This is one of the full-time residents, the elk. There's a herd that consists of about 40 to 50 uh, that may be passed through the area. Many times you'll see them spotted along the Tom Moody Trail up in the forest away from the canyon uh, itself. Other times you'll see just one or two of them passing through the area. Uh, by the, by the we also have mule deer that frequent the area. I've seen uh, up to eight or nine at one time uh, kind of passing through. <clears throat> Another critter that we have living in the canyon is the gray fox. Particular gray fox, I came up out of the canyon on a Sunday morning around 8.30 and uh, it was still out and about looking for uh, a meal. We also have coyotes that frequent the area. I've seen them uh, numerous times, early in the mornings, up and about. And we have jackrabbits. Jackrabbits uh, that I've seen there are usually quite, quite large. Cottontails also are, can be seen throughout the canyon. Um, it, uh, it's kind of interesting because on one day in the afternoon, I came across this guy, the bobcat, uh, weighed about 35 to 40 pounds. It was just below the bridge and it was chasing a little cocktail. I was managed to get a few photos off before it went up into the, uh, the walls up at the basalt down below the bridge. Another wildlife critter we have living in the canyon is the porcupine. Um, they are probably numerous porcupines and based on what I'm seeing up in the trees in the winter months, the porcupines like to get up in the trees and uh, they concentrate on stripping the bark off the branches, which is quite interesting. That is their, their main source for their diet in the winter months. We also have had prairie dogs up at the northern end of the canyon uh, along the Rio. Uh, I believe the colony is no longer existing there. We have several types of skunks. This one here, we came across about 8.30 in the morning um, along the Rio de Flag. It's a striped skunk, quite large, about uh, two and a half feet long. We also have the common skunk that you might see hanging around your house or on the streets. Um, They're also in the area. And one of my favorite is the Abert squirrel. They're really a lot of fun to watch. You'll see them throughout the year in the canyon. Uh, you can notice the aberts by their little they have on the top of their uh, head by their by their ears right here. And we also have rock squirrels. Many times you'll see them early, early in the morning. Here's uh, one of the parents with a youngster. Um, they are quite curious little creatures. They'll sit up in the rocks and kind of keep an eye on you if you're uh, walking through some of the rock. And we also have a golden mantle squirrels. Uh, unfortunately, someone fed this little guy a bunch of almonds. So you can see he's, he's stuck. His cheeks are, um, which is not a good idea to feed the wildlife. Uh, it really harms them because if they get used to people feeding them, then there's going to be an issue in the winter months when there's no food source available. And they'll be uh, hard pressed to uh, make it through the winter. You can tell a golden mantle squirrel, as you see around his eyes, it's like kind of a white ring. And he's also a little larger than this next little critter, the chipmunk. Chipmunk's also a squirrel, but you can see around his eyes, he's got like two white stripes. And that's how you can tell the difference between a golden mantle squirrel and a chipmunk. Chipmunks are also a little smaller than the golden mantle. We also have pocket gophers in the area. When you're walking through, if you see a mound of dirt, that's kind of pushed up, 
good chance it's it's a pocket gopher. Another critter that we have living in the area, you'll see throughout the year, many times along the trail, is uh, the horned lizards. And you can see from these three different lizards, they're different colorations, they kind of blend in with their environment, which I find quite interesting. Some of them are just um, no bigger than your thumbnail, others can get up to six, seven inches. We have lizards that you'll see running around on the basalt rocks throughout the summer, uh, especially around a uh, little bit after the sun comes up, it gets a little warm. They're out and about. We also have a variety of snakes. Um, we have the king snake, which is here. This guy was spotted down by the, uh, the water bird site. Uh, we also have snakes that are in the water. I've seen this guy in the water. And we also have the, uh, the gopher snake or the bull snake. About and about. This guy here is about six plus foot long and it's feet long, and he was uh, along the grasses uh, not far from the parking area. One of the other non native invasive item wildlife we have here is a crawfish. Uh, this many times in the summer and the afternoon, you'll see the crawfish just below the bridge that touches the reel, northern part. We also have minnow. Minnows uh, started appearing about three years ago or so. They're also uh, just below the bridge where I spotted the most of them. Here it is, it's kind of hard to see in this photo, but here's a whole spool. There's like hundreds of them right in here. Another uh, wildlife thing you might see in the, um, usually in the fall or August, late summer, uh, August, September, is tarantulas you might see out and about. We also have a variety of grasshoppers that are in the area. This uh, grasshopper here was on top of a thistle, and you can see the as the bee was approaching. And we also have uh, bumblebees as regular, better, regular bees um, you'll see throughout the summer. We also have a good variety of moths and butterflies that are visible in the area. Those caterpillars, the butterflies. And you'll see uh, a good variety of butterflies throughout the summer months. These are the swallowtails. You also might see monarchs and other types of butterflies, as well as the lady butterfly. Another item that I like watching in the summer months is the dragonflies. As you can see, there's a good variety of dragonflies that you may see up by the pond or along the street. And this is one of the most common, and they're just incredible. If you look at the wings and the structure of the wings, it just, it's just fascinating to uh, really study them. We also have a number of wasps and beetles and other bugs, flies, that you could see throughout the, in the summer months. One of the most beautiful things that I've seen in the canyon is a variety of birds. This blue grosbeak was actually heading south last fall, I guess it was like September, October. Um, and uh, it was um, right along the, uh, in the water just below the uh, bridge, hanging out in the tree. Um, the black-headed grosbeaks are also uh, available to be seen throughout the year, uh, mostly in the summer months as well as a large variety of blurs that uh, you can see uh, on different uh, mornings throughout the summer, um, migrating birds uh, in the springtime as well as in the fall. And you can see we got wobblers, sparrows, um, might even possibly see a meadowlark out in the grassy areas, as well as the green-tailed towhees. Um, we have the sparrows, the jays, robins, obviously, you'll see in the summer months. Uh, last year, I watched a robin build a nest right below the uh, waterfall up in the trees along the canyon. And this guy was also spotted just below the waterfall, this uh, kind of pepla, uh, which is uh, really a beautiful bird. And one of our most common visitors, and you'll hear him. Um, pretty much all year round, you can see them as the good old stellar jay. As well as in the summer months, um, we'll see the western bluebirds. They're quite prevalent in the canyon area. 
as well as this guy here, the Zuli bunting, it's another bird that I saw last fall migrating to this island. There's about four or five of them that are hanging out just below the pond. They look, uh, they were there for about almost a week hanging out along, along the wall. Another guy that you'll see in the summertime, um, quite prevalent, is a uh, lesser goldfinch. And here's a picture of a spotted toy. And another uh, bird is the killdeer. Uh, this one here was seen along, again, below the pond. And um, it was just hanging out in the water. And it was there for weeks. It likes to uh, get in the mud and get the bugs and the worms and whatnot. And a good old snipe. Snipe, I had first seen a snipe this uh, spring uh, in March. There were five of them. Again, they were hanging down below the pond. They were there for, uh, and they really go in the mud and get the worms and again, the insects. And you can notice that because of their long bill, they have really a good capability of digging into that mud and getting uh, the critters up to look for them. And we have a spotted sandpiper. This guy was taken. Uh, up in the pond uh, on the opposite side of where the uh, bridge crosses over. Uh, and it was um, quite uh, hanging out and quite interesting to watch. Another bird that I've seen just below the bridge and that's been spotted again this year is the uh, belted kingfisher. And I was curious at first why a belted kingfisher would be there. And that's when I discovered a couple years ago. They only eat fish, so the minnows uh, that appeared a number of years ago are supplying the food source for the of the kingfisher that hang out in that area. Here's a bunch of, again, lesser goldfinches. Uh, they were um, definitely enjoying the water, cleaning themselves up. It was uh, really incredible to watch, and these were, again, just below the bridge. This guy here was just below the waterfall over on the uh, west side or the north side of the, the canyon, uh, uh, trees up there and the gamble oaks and then the vines grow up and you can see the berries and he was just growing the berries that were available. We also have canyon wrens. Canyon wrens you might see uh, in the canyon along the basalt, uh, in the water and stuff like that. Um, they're quite interesting to uh, watch and then notice by their beautiful tail. And another visitor that we have in the spring that shows up, uh, usually by the pond area, uh, is the red-winged blackbird. And they are quite vocal. Uh, in the springtime, they're trying to get attention to stake out their territory as well as to attract a, a mate. Another beautiful bird that's passing through the area, actually right now in the late spring, I've seen um, you know, areas around Flagstaff is the western tanagers, which is a really beautiful bird. And we also have summer tanagers that may be visible um, during, the, during the spring and uh, also late in the summer. Mountain bluebirds are available to be seen, as well as this guy, the northern flickers. I've seen them quite uh, often in the, in the canyon, along the water, or up in the trees. One of my favorite is an acorn woodpecker. Uh, in the fall, when the acorns are getting ready to fall off the trees or, or whatnot, they'll start gathering acorns and they're literally, uh, there's some dead snags in the canyon. I've actually watched them and videotaped them pushing the acorns in holes that are in the trees for a future food source. We have a variety of woodpeckers. Here's a ladderback woodpecker. Uh, we also have the Lewis woodpecker come along the trail. Um, and we have the red nap sapsuckers, as well as the gila woodpecker uh, that I've seen in the area. We have two types of doves. This is Eurasian dove. This is a bigger type of dove. And we also have our morning dove, which is the more common in Arizona. Hummingbirds are always uh, interesting to watch. These usually appear late May, early June. Here's a little female broadtail, um, but also may, if you're lucky, see an Anna's hummingbird up here, which is quite done. This is a male, and he's coming off his color. And if you're lucky, uh, you may just see this hummingbird moth. 
At first, I thought it was a hummingbird, but it's actually a moth. And if the flowering plants are just right and out, special time of year, you may just uh, see one of these uh, beautiful creatures. Another resident of the area that lives in the water um, along the Rio de Flag is our northern leopard. And um, sometimes they'll be vocal in the springtime. Another non native creature that I've seen in the pond is this big old bullfrog. And last year, I was actually he was right by where the, the bridge kind of crosses over the railing. And uh, here's a close up of him. So he was still hanging around the pond area. We also have um, a couple red eared slider turtles that someone put there. Uh, they were probably bought at a pet store when they were just about uh, silver dollar size and they grew up. And this particular one, as you can see, uh, as a comparison, now the size of a mallard duck, the biggest one. It's called the red ear slider because of the side of their uh, head, it's got that little red there. And we also have a good variety of ducks that visit the area. Mallard ducks are the most common, but you'll see um, cinnamon teals as well as uh, a variety of other types of ducks. Here's a coot feeding a little baby. Um, usually the coots will hang up, hang out in the pond area. There's usually at least a pair of them that you see throughout the year. And these visitors was kind of surprising as a pair of avocets, American avocet. They were just kind of passing through and I was shocked. It was the first time I've ever seen an avocet. And uh, this was taken like two years ago, but they were hanging out on for a number of hours before they headed north. Here's mom, uh, mallard with uh, little ones. And they'll usually have their young ones in late spring, um, like late March, early April. But uh, I took this photo and then three weeks later, here's uh, mom following the little one. Another visitor of the area is a great blue heron. This one was taken just above the bridge. Um, I've seen there usually occasionally they'll spend a week or two or during a week, for a week, you might see them uh, hanging around the Rio de Flag. Close through. And we also have turkey vultures that have been growing in the area. They're uh, uh, ugly birds, but they're beautiful to watch. Ravens are here throughout the year, as well as occasionally I'll see a, a pressing bald eagle. Uh, usually I haven't seen those hang out in the canyon so much. Not as much as I've seen the, uh, I've seen still kestrels passing through the area. This one was taken just off the uh, uh, trail, as well as hawks. There's a number of hawks that you might see throughout the year. Here's a picture of a Cooper's hawk. But here's a, a young, uh, young hawk that was taken in the canyon as well as this guy, and I've been told this is a, a young um, Scotch law. And it is quite vocal. It makes a little crying sound. You might see that hanging out near the water, and they're kind of looking for the birds. And the most common hawk you might see is this red-tailed hawks. They're a frequent area all year. And to my surprise, one time day, about 9.30 in the morning, I came across this guy. And actually what you're seeing right here is his back. And he did the 180 with his head as I was coming up the trail. And um, I, was, I was surprised. Anyway, we spent 45 minutes together. And I've got some great videos to maybe share with you at some point. But uh, you can see he was kind of like had his eye on me. And I could tell he was getting a little tired because he kept yawning after about 45 minutes. I finally backed down the trail and uh, kind of let him go to sleep. And there you can see he's up against the trunk of the tree. Originally, when I first saw him, he was about a foot and a half away from the trunk. And it's just, it was incredible watching him walk ever so slowly to get up next to the, I'll go up to the trunk of the tree and go to sleep. Here's another shot of a the waterfall. It's kind of in the lower part of the canyon. Um, quite incredible and beautiful as the water continues to flow. So you just never know what you're going to see if you 
visit the canyon throughout the morning or the afternoon or evening. Uh, and my surprise, one day I found this guy being walked by his uh, rancher that lives along the Pitcher Canyon boundary. And he was walking the llama, and uh, the llama wanted to actually come nose to nose to my camera. He's quite friendly. One of the other surprises that I um, observed in a canyon is um, the raccoon. Although I haven't seen a raccoon, I've seen um, signs that they do live in the area. This is a, actually a billboard, a picture of a plaque that's at the canyon by the waterfall, by the, uh, sorry, by the pond. And you just never know, although I haven't seen a um, mountain lion, I've seen um, results of several elk in the last three or four years that have been taken down by this mountain lion, uh, a mountain lion. Uh, some of them, one of them uh, was just recently, uh, several months ago, came down uh, just below the, the pond, before the um, waterfall. Two others were obviously taken down by the Rio de Flag just above the bridge within a 20 foot space of each other over a couple of years. So we definitely have mountain lions in the area. Uh, the out of seeing one is probably very slim. They are up at uh, Mount Eldon. There's quite a few of them up there from my understanding. But uh, hopefully we won't run into one. And that concludes my presentation. Uh, I hope to see you at Pitcher Canyon sometime and looking forward to these new stewards joining our program. Thank you.